Ben Lowe's asked us to take a look through his men's bag website, Hip Industries, and give some feedback. So I thought I'd do that in a screencast. If anyone else is watching the video and has got some feedback for Ben, I'm sure he'd appreciate it if you left it in the comments. Um, so we'll start with the homepage. Um, and three things about the homepage that I wanted to talk through. So firstly, the photography that you've used. Um, I think it's really important with a fashion website to, to show people using your product. So much of fashion is about people. And to be honest, I don't think we do this particularly well on Shoes of Prey at the moment. We've only got the one photo of a model wearing our shoes, and, and I think we should in, um, improve on that. Um, but I think you need to do the same here, Ben. So the three uh, photos that you've got scrolling through on, on the page here, um, none of them have, you've got a person in the background, but none of them really have people as a feature. Um, it's just the bags as a feature, and, and yeah, I, I think it's worth changing that. Um, also, the f one photo that you've got, and I think this is actually the only photo of a person that you have on the website, um, it, the image just doesn't really resonate with me. I, I, I don't know if it's just me, so worth getting some feedback from other people, but yeah, I don't know if it's the beard or his expression or the black clothing, but it's just that it's just not a look I guess I, I aspire to to have. So yeah, w worth worth reconsidering that image. I, I'd actually do a if I were you, I would do a semi decent um, fashion photography shoot of showing people wearing your bags so that you've got some good photos to put on your homepage and to to use in other places for your site. Just as as an example, um. Netaporter have recently launched Mr. Porter, a men's fashion e-commerce website, and I think their homepage is just outstanding. They've got multiple pictures of uh, people, including like Winston Churchill, and linking to a report on power dressing, and um, Mr. Chris O'Dowd, an actor and comedian, on the on the homepage here, and the the photos just look amazing, and just makes me want to go and um, buy the clothes. These are all sort of people and images that, that you know, I, I'd aspire to, to look like. So, um, yeah, I, th I, think, I think you want to reconsider the photos on your homepage. The second thing, um, I think it's great that you're, you've you put some videos together um, of your bags in action. Um, I, I would look at embedding those videos on your website, but actually before you do that, I'd look at reshooting the videos. So, firstly, um, again, on, on the people thing. So, you, um, the you're obviously wanting to feature the bags in the videos, but you don't actually show your face in the video. It's just you're, you're always cut off from the neck, neck down. Um, and, and yeah, again, I think having people in your videos and trying to bring out some personality in the videos is really important. So, so Jody uh, features in all the videos on the Shoes of Prey website, for example, and then she's answering customer questions on the Facebook page, and she's in all of our um, Shoes of Prey uh, press, um, and then she's become the face of the brand, and, and that's been that's worked really well for us. Customers really sort of resonate with um, Jody's personality and, it, and, and her, her personality has become part of the brand and, and it's um, yeah, be worthwhile considering you doing something similar. I'd also um, reshoot the videos with the goal of improving the video quality. It, they're not too bad but they're still a little bit um, you know, handheld, uh, video camera-ish. Um, yeah, I'd buy some, I'd use some lights, proper ph photography or video lights. Um, I'd get a decent camera and a tripod, um, and I think even just those basic things will improve your video quality fairly drastically. Um, you don't need to go and hire a videographer or spend a whole bunch of money. Um, if you get get, the, get some of that basic equipment or borrow it from a friend and um, you know spend a day or half a day reading up on video and editing theory, and, and I think you'll be able to put some decent videos together. So that's uh, that's the homepage. The, the other thing I wanted to talk about while we're on the homepage is uh, your br your brand and your brand name. Um, for me, Hip Industries is just a little bit too uh, obvious and upfront a brand name, and and I think calling yourself Hip I think almost has the opposite effect. Like it, it almost feels unhip to to have that in your brand name. Um, like if you think about just as an example, if you think about some of the successful fashion e-commerce websites, so. Um, Zappos, Netta Porter, um, ASOS, uh, even even this new one, Mr. Porter. Um, they're quite sort of abstract names, uh, and, and they're, they're quite subtle in what they're trying to do. Um, they're not calling themselves, um, uh, you know, fashion or high fashion industries or something, for, for, which is kind of the equivalent of what Netta Porter could call themselves. Uh, so I think you, I, I would relook at your brand name and consider make consider coming up with something that's a bit more subtle. Um, just as an, another example of a really good brand name that's subtle, so a Apple, um, you know, it conjures up images of the apple falling on Isaac Newton's head, which kind of talks to the um, innovative ideas and creative ideas that 
uh, apple come up with, and the, also the crispness of biting into a fresh apple. Um, you know, it's kind of that, that again kind of resonates with the apple brand and the products and the freshness of their of their products. Um, so I think having a having a more subtle brand name um, would probably help you. Um, we did a blog post a while ago on the theory behind the what we the theory we used to come up with the shoes of prey brand name. And in that um, blog post, we link to Igor's naming guide, and I think that's a fantastic guide to go through when uh, naming a brand. And, and it'd be worth, even if you're going to stick with hip industries, just go through that naming guide and evaluate the name against all the criteria um, in, in Igor's naming guide. Uh, I think it would be very useful. Uh, so moving on from the home page, we'll go have a look at your product category page. Um, so if we click here on the bags link, um, I think I think this is a really well done page. You've got nice big photos of the bags. It's easily laid out. You've got your three bag styles running down the left and black and brown running horizontally, um, which is really good. I'd consider reshooting the brown Princeton bag. It looks quite different to the black Princeton bag, and I think that's just um, just in the photography. You've got good product descriptions, which is great. The the price points, I'd consider reviewing those. So when I look at them, ninety eight. 127 and 107. The thing that immediately comes to mind is um, this site must be a, an American or a UK website and they've just used an exchange rate converter to, to and rounded to the nearest dollar to come up their Australian dollar price points. And I know you're an Australian site and you're targeting Australian customers so you don't want, you don't want customers thinking that you're an overseas site because that might be a bit of a barrier to purchase. So I'd consider changing your price points to you know, 99, 129, and 109, or, or even rounding them to you know, 100, 130, 110. I think that would be better. Um, clicking through then to your product page, uh, I think this is really well done as well. So you've got four um, product photos here, um, good quality photography, uh, which is excellent. This photograph here, I'd consider reshooting and having more light come down inside the bag. So it looks like you've got a few um, spots to hold phones or things down in there, but it's a little bit hard to see because there's not quite enough light in that part of the bag, so potentially worth reshooting that, but, but other than that, the photos look really good. Nice big green add to cart button that stands out, good to product description. I'd consider adding in here what size laptop bag, uh, the maximum size laptop that can be held by the bag, so if I've got a 15 inch MacBook Pro, uh, I'm not going to be sure whether this bag's going to hold that, uh, my laptop, so I'm going to have to email you and then the time it takes you to reply, I might have gone and bought a bag somewhere else, so, so worth mentioning uh, the maximum laptop size there. Um, you could potentially add Facebook and Twitter share buttons, but th those things aren't critical. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think it's a good product page. If you're going to do the fashion shoot for your homepage and, and have people actually wearing your bags, I I'd consider adding those as product shots on this page as well. Um, really good to see close-ups of people wearing the bags on, on the product page can help with conversions. So yeah, good job here. Um, so I guess my, my final thoughts too would be in, in relation to your brand, I'd have to think about how you can differentiate yourself more in the market. Like you, your bags look excellent, your price point's excellent, and you're certainly I think you know, your mission of having stylish, affordable bags, I, th I think you've done a good job with that. But the, the problem with that uh, mission is it's, it's a little bit too... Um, sort of basic and, and generic. So if, if you're a fashion brand, it's, it's almost the simplest mission that you could go for as a fashion brand, something that's stylish and affordable. And because of that, there's nothing, it's not really unique enough and interesting enough to get the press covering you and to get customers telling their friends and talking about you and, and, your, and your site. So we did a blog post a little while back on um, Seth Godin's book, Purple Cow, and how that book inspired us to come up with the, con the Shoes of Prey concept, or, or to come up with a concept that's unique and interesting and that people will want to talk about. Um, and it'd be worth having a read of that book if you haven't already, and, and using it to help sort of inspire some ideas of how you might be able to differentiate yourself a little bit more in the market. I just feel like at the moment... Um, you know, your bags look great, and yes, they're affordable, but I, I feel like there are lots of stores I could go to in Sydney and buy something similar. And so for that reason, I think, um, you know, press the press may well have similar thoughts, um, and so you're going to struggle to persuade them to write about you. And customers coming to your site, if there's, if there's nothing really that exciting and interesting about your product, um, 
you know, they, they may they may well purchase, which is great, but then they're not going to go and spread the word about your site and tell, you know, be yelling to their friends, hey, you know, come and check out the Hip Industries website. And and if you don't want to be spending a fortune on ad, Google AdWords and Facebook marketing and affiliate marketing, um, you want that word of mouth um, and, and viral spread of your site. And, and you really need to differentiate your product in order a little bit more in order to achieve that. So I hope that's useful feedback, Ben. Um, and yeah, if anyone else is still watching the video, um, if you've got thoughts and comments for Ben, I'm sure he'd appreciate it if you left them in the comments. So thanks and good luck.